textures, metal, textures, material, compositing, and also if you have the add-on animation nodes. First of all, if I use backdrop, I can control shift click on any node and get a viewer node that will display whatever the node's content is back here. Now this of course only goes for a compositor node where actually images are involved, otherwise it won't work for obvious reasons. And let's say I just want to add a new node. All I'm going to do is press shift A and then go down to the according category and I'll choose the RGB curves. And if I insert a new node, I can drag it over any noodle and Blender will try to guess the perfect connection. This output is called image, this one's called image, and those two as well. So the decision isn't quite that hard. But still, even if there are black and white, like factors and anything involved, Blender will still usually make a very good guess. So now, of course, I can adjust the curves and change my image. And I can immediately see the results. I can move my nodes around by holding the middle mouse button and I can of course zoom in and out by using the mouse wheel. The backdrop can be scaled by using V and Alt V respectively. Now let's think I have a pretty long chain of nodes over here and I want to see what the chain looks like with one particular node disabled. I can just click on it and press M. And that will mute the node, meaning you can see here it will bypass the entire node going from this input all the way up to here, ignoring whatever the node would do. I press M again, it's enabled again. And the same goes if I insert a color mix node. You can see if I press M it's going from the upper input to the image and actually it will detect which input is connected and then mute the mix by a solid color which is pretty intelligent let's call it that but if I have both inputs connected it will always choose the upper one so Blender is really thinking for us if I hold control and drag over a noodle I can simply cut it so it will be gone and let's say we want to add this if I were to drag the output of this into an existing slot or a slot that already is filled, Blender will automatically push this one up or one down, depending on whichever slot it seems to be more suited. I can also unplug nodes. And if I drag it back in here and then unplug this, of course I can switch the two. So these are the most basic functionalities and they're already pretty great. But let's take this just one step further. For example, if I press Ctrl X on any node, Blender will delete it, but it will reconnect the left and the right nodes. Well, if there was a connection, of course. For example, if I have the curve node in here, I could now press Ctrl X in order to delete it. And if there were multiple inputs here, it will only keep the one that makes the most sense. I can undo that. And if I now press Alt D, I can disconnect the node, keeping the connection, which means, for example, if I accidentally put it in here because there were two competing noodles, I accidentally put it on the upper one, I wanted it on the lower one, I can just press Alt D and disconnect it. If I want to duplicate a node, I can press Shift D and it will duplicate the node, but if I want to duplicate and, con and keep this connection, I can just press Control Shift D and that will duplicate the node, including the connection. You can see there is a node selected because it's orange. If I press G, I can move it around. If I shift click on other nodes, I can move them around. Or if I can press A, I deselect them all and by B, I can box select them. It's not all that important, but it's nice to have it to keep it tidy. Now, let's say I have a couple of outputs, like so. So I have two of them. And now I remember I wanted to do a color correction right in front of 
those two. So I'm going to add my color balance node. But if I dragged it in here, I'd have to reconnect. This didn't take that long, but there are circumstances where it can take long. So what you can do is shift and drag over these noodles and it will combine the two. Now I can just drag it in here and it will influence both nodes. Also, if I want to keep things nice and tidy, I can do two things. I can either choose a frame and then I can drag my nodes in that frame and release or I can delete the frame and I can choose a bunch of nodes and press Ctrl J. I can then label the frame, can increase the label size and can type in whatever I want here, but this is for scripting. The label is actually this one. Okay, this is the identifier. Another way to keep things nice and tidy would be to group them. Let's say I want, I know each image or each render layer I import in the node tree. I want to do the same thing with. I can choose Control G. This doesn't work because there's a reroute here, I think. Let's Control X, delete that reroute and press Control G. That will group the nodes. And you can drag any input over the group input and you can add additional nodes. I'm just going to keep it simple. Use a mix node. And for example, I can now mix this and drag the factor over here and I, the image output I'll make a new factor for. If I press now tab you can see all the inputs on the left side that came from here and the two images that came from here. I can rename them but I'm not going to do that right now. Inputs, outputs, I can just double click here and rename them. And if you're in any other node tree you can import them or you can add them again as a group. Node group and and this is called node group because that's what it says over here in the property. You can of course rename this. Now I can always insert my group. That's all I can think about right now about the Blender compositor. A lot of these features I'd like to see in other compositors because they just make your life so much easier. This has been Frederik Steinmetz for blendediplom.com. Thank you for watching.